3D printing custom parts for a modified modem, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. In a previous video, we talked about modifying the Glynet Muddy with external antenna adapters. And even prior to that, we talked about mangling the TTL to get unlimited LTE on a SIM card that you probably shouldn't allow that. In this video, because you guys liked those so much, we're going to be further talking about modifying the Muddy with a system to hold those external adapters so that's not quite as fragile. Now this might be news to some of you, dangling antenna adapters outside of a modem is a good way to end up with broken coax, and we don't want that. I wanted something that's rugged and looked almost like it came out of the factory with external and antennas on it. Now that brings us to this. This is a little 3D printed antenna holder I designed. As you can see, the little adapters in there dangling through the back. And I also just pulled it out of a cradle I designed. Now, these things exist so that I can more easily use this modem within this van. Now, I don't normally use it with these antennas. However, I figured most of you would, so I wanted to show what it looked like. You can just flip these up. And there you go, you got big old bunny ears that give you significantly more gain and signal strength than you would have had before. And I showed a little bit in the previous video using RSSI and signal, uh, other signal strength indicators to give you an idea of how much of a gain you'll get using these antenna adapters. Since then, I've doubled up on my external WeBoost antennas, and these things are awesome, especially in this Faraday cage of a van, getting both antennas to the outside of the van gives me speeds that I just, I, I've never had. Now that you've seen the setup, I wanted this video to be a little bit more than me just showing you 3D printing parts. So let's actually look into some of the practical use cases of doing this antenna swap. Motorcycle go burr. For example, let's show the difference between using the modem with the indoor antennas and the external antennas and how that affects things like playing CSGO, because that is a very latency intensive game and that was one of the biggest issues I had. While I've got speed boosts, the latency consistency has been much improved and that makes it possible to game on the road or do, even do video and voice chats that would have been muddied up before. No pun intended on the muddy thing, by the way. Now normally this is the kind of thing that I would be screen capping, but for a variety of reasons we're gonna have to do with the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a speed test here, and right now I just have the bunny ear antennas inside the van. Yeah, we're getting about 5.5, 6 megabits down. That's totally usable. Let's wait and see what the upload's like. Oof, there we go. I'm surprised this test isn't even just straight up failing. As you can see, transmitting through a metal box is pretty difficult. Now I am in a pretty rural area at the moment. I'm not in my usual urban camp spot. But this just goes to show that something like a cell booster might be better here. But let's wait and see what the external antennas are like. I'm going to swap those in real quick. And now we rerun the test. And would you look at that? Over five times the download speed and, well, I don't even need to mention the upload speed. We actually have a usable upload speed now. So that's pretty impressive. I'm, I'm really happy with that. Now we're gonna switch back to the bunny ears and fire up CSGO. Ah yes, good old Nuke, my uh, favorite map. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start making excuses for myself. Oh, hello. I was going to say that since I only just got the antennas recently installed, I am extremely rusty and will probably play like garbage. But as you can see, I don't even get to play really. I'm, uh, yeah, I've got a ping of 649 and I am teleporting around and, oh, I didn't even spawn with my loadout. Let's see if we can get at least a kill. Oh, um, hello? Oh, no, I, I died there, apparently. I just died a second time before I even respawned. Yeah, so I think you get the idea. This is on the bunny ears inside the van, and as you can tell, 
we weren't getting effectively any upload speed. So the server doesn't really know where we are on a consistent basis, and that's why we keep teleporting. Now, while CSGO is pretty good about this, some games will even ban you for this activity because they think you're intentionally lag switching. CSGO can generally tell the difference between lag switching and just terrible internet. So I'm not worried about a ban, but in some games like uh, Call of Duty and whatnot, I have seen issues with this. I did just get a kill. So, yeah, it's it's playable, but I certainly wouldn't want to get too into a game because of that. Now let's switch back over to the external antennas and see just how much more playable this is. I was able to do that quick enough that we are in the same match. So we're on the same server. Ooh, not bite of the knife. Aw. Well, my ping is still relatively high, but I think that's a running average and it hasn't entirely adjusted yet. The game definitely feels like it's running smoother. And there you go. I mean, I just had a flick reaction there, so that goes to tell you, yeah, the ping's down to about 80 to 90 milliseconds now, which is about what can be expected on a good LTE connection. 5G would of course be better, but there aren't uh, many, if any, 5G modems out and about quite yet. Okay, I should probably stop playing games and actually finish this video, but this is just too much fun. And as you can see, the difference between external antennas and the internal antennas inside the van is huge alone. It makes the game playable versus not at all playable. It's absolutely impressive just going from the internal antennas to the external. Not to even mention, I can't easily go back to the built-in antennas of this thing, but if I could, it would be, I, I wouldn't have an internet connection where I currently am. I've used this modem without antennas here and I just didn't have internet. So it makes a huge difference and I'm pretty stoked about it. And that's really about all there is to it in this video. I mostly wanted to put this up to say, hey, I designed these 3D printed parts that you can use for your own mod, which they're linked down in the description below on Thingiverse, as well as my GitHub. But people also had a couple of questions, like if I wanted to do this mod myself with only one external antenna adapter, should I use the aux or the main? I'd suggest the main, but even then, it will still try to switch over to aux every couple of seconds to see if the signal strength's better, and you'll notice uh, packet drops. This modem uses MIMO, uh, multi-input out, multiple output antenna mixing, basically, to get higher speeds and more consistent uh, ping and all that. So ideally, you'll have two of the same antenna mounted to the outside of the modem or outside of the van or whatever with a good spacing so that MIMO can work. Another question someone asked is, how does this compare to using a cell phone booster? And the differences are quite dramatic. Now, I don't have it all set up, so I can't show you in this video. Let me know if you want a follow up. But I've observed something like 30 to 40 millisecond differences in ping and double the speed on external antennas versus the booster. The booster helps your signal strength and will help the consistency of your network, but it just does not compare to two properly wired external antennas. That's mainly because the booster can't do MIMO and it's basically funneling all of the data from the tower through a bottleneck into your modem. It works, it helps, and I've definitely had situations where it's more useful than the external antennas, but they're few and far between, especially if you're staying in urban areas like I mentioned in my previous video. Anyway, that's about all there is to it. Like I said, the STL files are down in the description below, as well as links to the modem, antenna adapters, and the WeBoost antennas I'm currently using, as well as the little external antennas. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.